Hello everybody, thanks for tuning into the channel today. If you've been following along, you'll have seen that I was outfitting my 2021 KTM Duke 890 for an epic trip, and I just got back into town. We did 18,000 kilometers in the span of about 27 days. Took me from the Atlantic Ocean out of Halifax, Nova Scotia, all the way to the Rocky Mountains in Alberta, up into BC, all the way to the Yukon, and right to the Arctic Ocean in the Northwest Territories. We also camped the entire time. So we only, out of the entire 27 days on the road, we only hit three hotels and those were the, for the most dire of circumstances. And I thought I should probably do a video while I have everything on the motorcycle that kind of shows what did I bring for such a long motorcycle trip? Everything that we used to live, survive, and enjoy this adventure was on this motorcycle. It's gonna be a detailed tour of the things that I brought. You can see that the bike is fairly loaded up, but it's not overdone. You get some of these motorcycles have so much stuff on them. I wanted a really light pack on the bike. I wanted to have that nimble canyon carving capabilities on this bike for the mountains. I wanted to be able to have fun on the motorcycle while driving, but I also wanted to have all the comfort that I possibly could have. What I brought for 27 days is a very similar to what I would bring for even four days. Hopefully you guys get some ideas, so let's jump right in. Okay, so the first thing I want to point out is I packed my items in a way that made it easy to access the items I use frequently. I've got my two side panniers, I got my one tail bag, I have my two front side bags at the lower portion, and I have a tank bag. So the first thing I'll do is I'll take off my bungee mesh. That is a, a super, super important piece of gear because this allows it to expand and contract. When you're on the road, uh, especially like we were, where one day it was 36 degrees Celsius and the next night we were in the mountains and it could have been five degrees Celsius. You've got a major uh, variety of temperatures. And so ha having the ability to take off sweaters or layers and add them on, etc., buy food, this, this bungee cable here is going to allow you to carry those things uh, as the need arises. I have a rain suit. Rain pants, they're actually by Harley Davidson. They work really well. I have the Oxford rain seal jacket. This thing worked spectacular. I was dry through the, the most major of rainstorms you could possibly imagine. And a critical piece is I've got these rain boot covers. Now, these are important because I wear leather boots and I did not bring an extra set of footwear. So I know sometimes people bring an extra pair of shoes. I find these boots very comfortable. I didn't want to take up any extra space for footwear. So it was imperative that my feet stayed dry because having wet leather boots at night <laughs> kind of is awful. Another thing I have is a tripod for my photography. Back here, I have a uh, little camp light. Now this is a solar powered light. This is by uh, Woods. This solar light will actually charge while I was driving on the sunny days, of course. So I always had light every night. And in a pinch, it does have a USB charging port on it. So this is a great little tool to have. A cotton hoodie. It's always a good idea to have an over sweater of some sort. On top of my tail bag, I have a uh, Mountain Company Equipment backpack. And this is a super, super light backpack. Inside of that, I have a Osprey three liter water bladder. This backpack is great because it, it compresses very, very, very small. If I did get somewhere and I wanted to say, go for a little hike, a little day hike, you've basically got a full on backpack. You can carry, you know, some snacks, water, bear spray, etc. So again, a nice little piece of gear that uh, I ended up using quite a bit. I have two different sleep systems. On my front side bag here, this is a dry bag 80 by SW Motec. It's an eight liter. I have my Hennessy hammock. So this was easy to get to right here in the front of the bike if I was tired in the afternoon or if I was, we were running late and we just arrived to the campsite and I didn't feel like tearing everything out because we knew we were gonna be up early. I could just go in there, whip this out, have an amazing sleep and I didn't have to unpack anything because it was so easy to get access to. This is the SW Motec dry bag 350. This is a 35 liter dry bag. So inside here, I kept my iPad, a heated jacket insert by Harley Davidson. Uh, I used it when I had a Harley Davidson motorcycle and quite frankly, it works really, really well. It goes underneath any jacket I have. I can tell you that uh, we have, we've seen temperatures of two degrees Celsius and not once was I uncomfortable or cold thanks to my heated grips and thanks to my heated jacket insert. Also in here, I have a little GoPro box of uh, electronics. So this is where I keep my microphones and my hard drives and GoPro 
mounts and things like that. My sleeping bag is in here. This is a hot core T200. They say it's good to uh, minus 10 degrees Celsius or 14 degrees Fahrenheit. I also have my tent. So as I mentioned, I had two sleeping systems, my hammock, which I would use if there was trees and I was kind of in a hurry. If there was no trees at all, hammocks are not an option. So you need to have a tent. So I have the Storm Break 2. This is a two person tent inside here. I also have the footprint for it. And this tent worked really well and it's not that large and uh, not that heavy. I also have my kitchen back here. My kitchen setup is a cutting board. I have a camp rag, some camp suds. Now this soap is biodegradable and uh, I buy it in bulk. And this is great because you can use it for washing your dishes. You can use it for washing your clothes, washing your hair, and uh, you can use it in the streams. Again, being biodegradable, this stuff's amazing. Miscellaneous spices. If you've watched some of my other videos, you know I like to cook a little more fancy than just the dehydrated food bags. This is my MSR Dragonfly. This stove is the one I use when I'm using, when I'm cooking primarily for suppers or anything that it takes a little bit of time. The nice thing about this stove is that it does work on both propane that I carry in the little canister, but it can also work off gasoline and or diesel. It's a great tool to have. Right in this side bag here, I do carry a little canister for camp stoves, but I do have the Optimus Crux, which is basically a pocket stove. This is what I would use in the event of if I just need to make a quick meal, just wanted to boil some water. This screws on the top of this. And in the event that I run out of that, which incidentally it did happen, I was able to cook with the Dragonfly. So having two different cooking systems worked out well for me. Also have a uh, pot here that I use to cook with. And inside here, I've got all sorts of different food matches and last but not least i have a mosquito jacket in the event that mosquitoes get horrendous like they are here right now all right so on this side bag i have a mirror i do carry uh bear bangers and flares i also have my nemo reclining camping chair you'll see that in some of the videos uh that i post of the journey yeah you can sit on a rock or a log or your bag of clothes or whatever but you know what this is so much better and uh i made room for it and i'm i'm glad that i did coffee because that needs to be quick excess some more spare food again i kind of tuck food in all the different nooks and crannies if there was any room i would put extra food in there i have my Philo, my nemo Philo, which is my pillow i have a hot core sleeping bag liner for the colder nights and my nemo tensor insulated sleeping pad and that's everything in that side case this side pannier here was a lot of camera gear but i did carry a couple other quick access items here i have a cooking pot in the event that i wanted to use my little pocket stove which i carried in my tank bag this is by sea to summit and this becomes a cooking pot that i can either cook rice on box of craft dinner boil some water for from coffee extremely helpful to have i used it quite a bit and inside of that I actually have my Sea to Summit kitchen sink. This is a five liter bag that opens up and it's a sink. I have another Sea to Summit towel. This is a uh, compactable towel. This bag here I kept quickly accessible. This is a Ozark Trail dry bag. And uh, this was my bear bag. So basically I would take any food items. My whole entire kitchen actually fits inside this bag. There are two loops on the clips here, if you can see them. I would rope that and I would actually take this bag to about three or 400 feet, 500 feet away from the campsite and uh, hang it up in a tree about 15, 20 feet. This is where I did keep all my clothing as well. Now I kept everything in a Woods 10 liter dry bag. Now this is a dry bag that also works as a compression sack. So I can put all my clothes inside here, push all the air out, hold the air out and this compacts everything nice and tight. One thing that most people overpack when they go on a motorcycle trip is clothing. So I was gone for 27 days and I carried three sets of everything. One set on me and two sets of everything else. So I had another spare set of jeans. I had a pair of Columbia camp pants that were quick dry, two sets of undergarments, t-shirts, a full uh, merino wool base layer long sleeve shirt and long johns all packed in here. When you're on the road, you don't need 10 pairs of clothes because once you've gone through all your clothes, you're on your third set, 
you can just find a laundromat somewhere, find a sink somewhere, find a river somewhere, wash your other two sets, let them dry while you're riding. And that's pretty much what I did the entire time. Also have what's called a snug pack. Bought this off Amazon. It's a handy little bag because of the fact that it does have a clip on it. So what's nice is when you're in your tent, most tents have little uh, loops in the roof. So you can actually just hang that right from there. So I actually have full deodorant, hairbrush, toothbrush, toothpaste, contact solution, shaving, stuff even an electric shaver i can be on the road for an extensively long time and i don't look like grizzly adams when the trip's over so and the other stuff i had in that side case was again all my camera equipment some extra toilet paper and a face buff in the event that it gets really dusty out so you notice back here underneath the the seat i've got two nelson riggs gear canister holders and inside there i have MSR fuel bottles. These are eight, almost almost one liter and uh, or 30 fluid ounces of fuel. These also doubled as fuel for my Dragonfly cook stove in the event that I ran out of my propane cylinders, which I did as I mentioned. So it was nice to be able to hook that Dragonfly right up to these and uh, have a nice warm meal and some warm coffee. So you'll notice over here, uh, attached to my passenger peg. I have two more Nelson Riggs gear canisters. So the first thing is I have my SOG Tomahawk. So this was both personal protection as well as a great tool for campfire to get some wood. Also, there was a couple spots, the ground was really soft and sandy, and this actually made a real nice quick uh, plate for my kickstand to sit on. In here, I've got a 1.2 liter thermos of water. So this is where I would carry my cool drinks. Now below it, this is two US gallon or 7.6 liter armadillo fuel bag. You have a nozzle, hook that nozzle up to there, filled this thing up, used my bungee cords, kept it up there when I needed to fill it up. It was amazing. And when I'm not using it, it compacts down so nice and small. Over here, this is what I basically carried all my maintenance uh, and emergency stuff in. A strap, some chain wax. I have a tarp, some Allen keys, a ton of rope here. This is the nylon rope. This is what I use to haul my bear bag up into a tree. I've got Gorilla Tape, standard Gorilla Tape, and I also have double-sided Gorilla Tape. A tire compressor with a uh, shop rag in the event of needing to clean up some oil or whatever. Got a full KTM tool kit here. Every tool I needed to change the oil, take my tires off, adjust anything on the bike, handlebars, mirrors, windshields, everything, all on this KTM tool kit. Some standard black tape, uh, first aid kit containing all the standard stuff you would find in your first aid kit. Last but not least, I have my tank bag and a couple items up here. In my cup holder, I had my smaller thermos. Up inside here, I had my bear spray. And inside the tank bag, for those of you who have cameras and camera gear, you can understand there was a lot of battery charging that had to happen. I have my GoPro batteries, my GoPro 360 battery chargers there. I also carry a 25,000 milliamp battery bank. So this is basically charging all the time I'm driving. Uh, on this trip, I had about 23 batteries I had to keep charged up all the time. I did not use any plugins and walls from hotels because we were camping most of the time. So between the two USB ports on here and this battery bank, I kept everything charged up nicely. I have my uh, Woods headlight, chargeable through USB as well. One of those batteries. I carry some uh, Gorilla Super Glue, my wallet, sunglasses go in here, and my Leatherman. So that's everything I brought on my camping trip. I lacked nothing. I don't believe I brought anything I didn't actually use. Hopefully this gave you some ideas on some things that you might want to bring on your camping trip. Maybe you thought I went overboard and had way too much. Uh, maybe you think I didn't have enough and I should have had a couple extra things. Why don't you leave me some comments down below on some of your must-have items that you bring in your camping trips. As always, if you haven't, don't forget to like, subscribe, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.